Hi everyone, let's go ahead and get started with sentiment analysis with distilled bird using hugging face. This is a part of NLP with hugging face tutorials. Here is the GitHub repo from where you can download this notebook. You need to visit Lakshmi Merit forward slash NLP tutorials with hugging face. I have uploaded here multiple uh, notebook which I have included in my NLP tutorials with the hugging face. Then there is a video series for each of these uh, uh, for each of these lectures are made there you can visit and you can watch those videos from here let me just show you those videos you can get those from here uh, somewhere it should be there otherwise you can visit to my channel at youtube.com forward slash kgp talkie and there in the playlist section you will see here uh, my hugging face tutorial with the transformers yes. so here are all the videos included you would see there all right so in this lesson we'll be doing sentiment analysis now the question is what is sentiment analysis well sentiment analysis is the process where we use some computational method to identify whether with what is the emotion whether it's the positive or negative or neutral you can say but in our case we are not considering neutral so we'll be considering positive and negative case it is also known as opinion or you can say that uh, uh, attitude of the speaker whether it is positive or negative you can understand with the example like great service for an affordable price we will definitely be booking again so this one is considered as positive whereas this one can be considered as neutral review where the person says that just book two nights at this hotel the negative one is horrible services the room was dirty and unpleasant not worth the money in our case, we will be taking IMDb movie reviews data set in which we will be having either positive review or the negative review. All right, so we'll be using here the transformers. Let's go ahead and understand these transformers. Although I should tell you that I have already covered these transformers, these transformers in detail in my previous videos. You can watch this uh, 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 this playlist. I'm just gonna copy it from there and then I'm gonna paste that playlist here so that later on you can watch that let me just uh, paste it here here it is all right so you can visit here and you can watch the playlist where i have discussed about the transformer architectures in detail for now you can understand that for a given text data you have to first tokenize your text data thereafter positional encoding and embedding will be will be included with the tokens thereafter it will pass to the transformers attention layers so these are the encoder which are actually known as the encoders including these attentions then these encoder layer produces these output which is known as hidden states so these hidden states are actually the context vector so these text data gets converted as the embedding and these embeddings are contextual embeddings that's mean these embeddings have meaning there then this this whole thing is known as the encoder and thereafter there is decoder in our case which we are currently using like we are using here a distilled bird in our case which utilize only encoder part all right so we'll be focusing on the encoder part only in encoder part the text data will be given and then finally the contextual vector will be calculated thereafter the classification header will be included at the end of your contextual vector with the neural network like the deep neural network which you say that fully connected neural network so these networks thereafter there would be a sigmoid or softmax you can say there would be a sigmoid and softmax layer which will be converting these outputs there as the final final probability and the classes in case of the binary classification let's go ahead and understand what is the distilled but but before that i should tell you that this distilled but is a smaller faster and the cheaper version of the but model it has a 40 percent smaller than the bird and runs 60 percent faster than the bird it preserves 95 percent of the accuracy of the bird and uh, this distilled bird you 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 see their bird model is here pre-training and the fine-tuning part again i should tell you that you would be getting the detailed analysis of these in this uh, playlist for now you just see that let's suppose that this is the bird then there is a distilled bird so what you do here while uh, while distilling this distilled bird there is a process of distillation which reduce the size of the bird model so the, in in the process of distillation what happens here the corpus data is given for the bird model and the distilled bird model together 
and then the model gets trained the first time i mean to say that the during the distillation process which we don't do here because we already have the distilled process of the birth model so how the birth uh, uh, was invented so there was the birth model there was the another model then the birth was trained on this model and then distilled birth was trained on the same model then what was the accuracy there this distilled birth uh, this birth model had these were forced to learn by this distilled birth model so sometimes this is also known as teacher forcing learning all right so where this birth performs as a teacher and this distilled birth performs as a student so this distilled birth learns from this birth model because this is the teacher there after you 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 can understand this from here the process that in a bert model there are multiple layer of the encoders but in case of the distilled bert model there is less number of the encoders here all right so what happens here during this learn learning process then distilled bert learns with only few fewer number of the layers so so those layers which does not learn much or the layers which performs poor those gets removed in case of the distilled bert that's how this distilled bert was invented all right so the sum of uh, you know uh, 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 some of the advantages of distilled bert over the bert model is like the parameter reduction it performs uh, 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 almost equal to the bert model but the parameters are reduced by almost half thereafter you will see that the model training and inference is also quite fast as compared to the bert model so this enabled that this distilled bert model can be used into the production all right so while getting started with the google colab you need to make sure that you connect with the with, with the gpu here so i have connected already with the t4 gpu there after you have to also make sure that you install all the necessary packages transformer accelerate data set but which you map learn these are the necessary packages for the transformers thereafter i also install some other necessary packages which i'll be using for the data pre processing like i'll be downloading spacy i'll be downloading beautiful soup text blob ml extend and thereafter there is a custom library for data processing that is the pre process kgp talkie so this you can also get from my github repository so at the my github repository i have made a package which slowly uh, which only do which only do uh, uh, pre processing of the text data for the nlp task all right so once you have done all this stuff i'm now going to get start with the coding so let's get started with the actual fun so the first of all i'll show you how you can do the sentiment analysis with the pipeline so i'll be using here the transformers pipeline so you can simply write here from transformers import pipeline thereafter i write here sentiment underscore pipeline is equal to pipeline in that you need to give here the name of the pipeline which i say that i want sentiment analysis thereafter you pass here the data let's say i want to say here i love you well thereafter i say that i hate you then i say here sentiment underscore pipeline in that i pass this data now i run it here so what happened it is going to automatically download a model which is trained for sentiment analysis thereafter this text data will automatically get encoded or you can say the tokenized internally and then finally sentiment prediction will be made here so we see here the first one says that the positive level that's the 99% sure that this is the positive sentiment and here it is 99% sure that this is a negative sentiment so that's how you can do without fine tuning your own model you can do the sentiment analysis but let's say you want to do the sentiment analysis on the custom data or you want to train your own model then how would you do that that is what we are going to do here so let's go ahead and get started with data loading and pre processing part so in the data loading pre processing part you have to visit my github repo lakshmi merit github.com forward slash lakshmi merit in that you need to visit all csv ml data files download in this file you will be seeing here imdb data set so which is here so this is there you have imdb data set i click on there there after i click on raw then 
then it is going to open otherwise right click and then copy the link from here then you can import here pandas and other necessary libraries so i write here import pandas as pd thereafter i write here import numpy as np thereafter i import here matplotlib dot pyplot as plt thereafter import preprocessing kgp talky as ps so i have got all the necessary packages here now we need to read the data it says that the preprocessing kgp talky is not installed probably we have to come here and then see the name so it's actually the preprocess kgp talky the package name so I write it here, preprocess kgp talky as ps. Now you should be able to see it as installed here. All right, let's go ahead and read the data. So I write here pd dot read csv. In that I pass my, you know, uh, the data which we have from here. I just copy it from there and paste it here. That's the URL. Thereafter I just get this df dot head. So in this case I'll be seeing our data. It has two columns, review and sentiment. So this review you see is having some special characters. So these characters we, these characters or you say these tags we have to remove. These are the HTML tags. Other than that, here you see the sentiments are mentioned in string data, positive and the negative. These string need to be converted as numerical data. And uh, total number of uh, uh, the data points here we have uh, 25,000 perhaps. Let me just see that. Okay, so the total we have a 50,000, which is a huge. And if we go to train this 50,000 data set, it is going to take a lot of time. Just to save some time, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just select some randomly 10,000 rows. So I select here DF dot sample, and then I select here 10,000. All right, so with this, sam sam with this uh, random sampling is used to select the 10,000 data. Now I select here DF dot save. I see the 10,000 data, the two columns, that's the shape. Then uh, you see there, is there any null value that you can check with df dot is null dot sum. It will see there, it, it, will see, it will show here that there is no null value. All right, let's go ahead now to the pre-processing. So I'm gonna do here the pre-processing. So during the pre-processing, the few things we will be doing here in our data, in this data, we have to first understand that what is the total word count in this data? So with the word count, we will be getting some idea that how much tokens it will need to include. It will need to include the context of the whole review. And for that, I'm going to use the pre-process KGP talky. You need to come here, Lakshmi made it pre-process KGP talky. And here, we uh, here I have shown all the you know important functions and the methods which you can uh, use with your uh, code. I'm just gonna uh, I'm just going inside the init dot py. Inside this you will see here you have get word count you use to get the number of words, character count, average word length, stop word, hashtag, all these stuffs you can use to get there. So I'm just gonna use these methods from the pre-process KGP talky which we have already imported as ps. So I write here the df and there I write here word underscore counts is equal to df review dot apply and then I write here lambda x ps dot get word counts. All right. So here I get then I get here x. Thereafter, I write here the character counts. So the df character counts is equal to the df review dot fly. Then I have here lambda x ps dot get car count x. So the first one will get the word count. Second one will get the character count. Let's go ahead and get the average word length. So I write here df a v g word length I write here the df dot review dot apply I write here the lambda x p s dot get a v g word length 
thereafter I type here X all right now let's go ahead and get the stop words count so I write here the DF stop words underscore counts and there I write here the DF there after the review then I write here the lambda X P S dot get underscore stop words count all right that's how we get it here there after what I see here that I just run this actually okay so in this df now if you see we have got these additional columns like word counts character counts. seems like these word counts here we have like 234 244 word counts so the probably as per this word count seems like we have to make sure that at least 512 uh, context size to include whole context of the review all right other than that we see average word length like the five characters per word generally the four characters uh, or the per token is the standard in uh, natural language processing so with that we can say that there would be probably uh, uh, around the 500 max to max tokens so that uh, uh, it will include whole context there there is a lot of the stop words inside this text data and uh, in case of transformers stop words does not matter and stop words are also necessary to have in your text data so that you can uh, contain the context of the text data otherwise in traditional uh, in traditional machine learning uh, models sometimes we remove the stop words but in this case seems like stop words removal is not the correct way or not the right process to do let's go ahead convert these data into uh, uh, a normalized form that means we will be converting it into a lower case for that i write here the df review is equal to df and then review dot str dot lower it's like that thereafter we have to also remove the html tags so i write here the df review is equal to df review thereafter apply and then we write here lambda x ps dot remove html tags here that's how we do let's go ahead and run this now we will be having our clean text data so with this clean text data now we would be able to build our model but before that i have to uh, visualize this word counts actually so for that i write here value underscore counts so it's like this value underscore counts that's what we see here that there is 130 which have uh, uh, the word length word count which have maximum number of the words and then i write here histogram uh, histogram so dot hist so with this we should be able to see here a uh, histogram and uh, inside this the number of bins we can see that perhaps bins is equal to 50 all right so we see here that that's how it is uh, actually the distributed the word counts here and this in this word count it says that seems like the maximum word counts are somewhere around 80 and the 100 that is okay and uh, with this case now we we should be able to get the full context if we consider 512 as the maximum token for our model all right now here we are going to do data preparation for ml now for data preparation for ml we have to do here uh, uh, the custom data set building there after uh, let me just write those steps here so the custom data set there after we will be uh, uh, doing here the tokenization in fact this tokenization will be done inside the custom data set itself there after uh, after this custom data set we will be building our uh, compute matrix like uh, evaluation matrix you can see there evaluation or compute matrix thereafter we will be doing here the training arguments so we'll be building the training arguments thereafter we will be building the trainer and thereafter we will be doing the training and then finally 
we will be doing the testing. So this is the whole process which we are going to follow now. All right, so now import necessary packages. I import here torch. Thereafter, from torch dot utils dot data import data set. Thereafter, from scalar dot model selection import train test split. Now let's go ahead and build the custom data set. I need to build here a class for a custom data set. So I write here class custom data set. Then I need to extend here a data set. This is the PyTorch data set. So it will be having here a three method. So the first method is init method, which is the default method. Thereafter, it will be a <coughs> sorry. It will be having two more methods, the length method and the third method it will be having here def get item method. Alright, so these are the three methods now we need to implement with the custom data set. In init method it has here the self, thereafter we will be passing here few parameter. Like we will be passing here reviews, thereafter we will be also passing here the target variable which is labels, thereafter I write here the tokenizer, thereafter I say here the max len is equal to 512 which we had discussed earlier that 512 will consider the full context of the data. Thereafter I write here the self dot texts is equal to the texts. So doing this will make sure that we can call these, uh, uh, these variable directly in other, uh, other methods. Thereafter I write here the self dot labels is equal to labels. Thereafter self dot tokenizer is equal to tokenizer. Thereafter self dot max underscore uh, uh, self dot max len is equal to max underscore len it's like that all right thereafter i return here return length of self dot texts all right thereafter in this get item i write here the text is equal to str and then i write here self dot texts and then I write here IDX. Here I write label is equal to str self dot sorry there should be the labels and then IDX. You see what happens here since we have assigned these tokenizer as self dot tokenizer and uh, text and labels equal to uh, uh, these we assign to self dot text and the labels now we can get these text and the labels directly from here. Alright, once all these things are done, then in this get item, I get here the encoding is equal to self dot tokenizer and there I write here self dot tokenizer text data and then truncation is equal to true. Thereafter, I write here the padding is equal to max length all right thereafter i write here the max length is equal to self dot max underscore length so you see what happened here we pass the text data to be tokenized and there you will see these idx we have to also assign so these tokenization happens step by step that's mean the row by row and the id for each row is passed here in fact this is just a simple index starting from zero then a text and the label we have got from self dot text and self dot labels then we pass here the text data to to be uh, uh, to get it tokenized and the maximum length we had assigned here that's the 512 that's the context size and if anything is greater than 512 then that will get truncated and if any length is less than 512 then the padding will be done till the maximum length there, there after this encoding now we need to return three things from here the two things goes as the input that is the input id and attention mask and then final one is label 
so i need to write here input underscore ids do remember these have to be input underscore ids these keys need to be matched thereafter i write here the encoding input underscore ids thereafter i write here attention underscore mask then i write here encoding attention mask thereafter i write here label so that's how i write here so input ids encoding input ids attention mask attention mask that's how we get it here let's go ahead and run this so our custom data set is ready now we have to utilize this custom data set so that we can make our data set which can be used with the model all right I write here a uh, prepare tokenizer and model. So I write here from transformers import auto tokenizer. Along with this, I also import here auto model for sequence classification. Thereafter, I'm gonna assign the checkpoint which I'm gonna use. That is, I'm gonna use here distilled birth base uncased model. So this uncase says that even though if we have upper case or lower case, so it will not matter for the model. Model will convert everything into the lower case. Thereafter, we write here the device is equal to the torch dot device just to make sure that we are using here uh, GPU. Otherwise, directly if you are using the CUDA, so you can directly use here the CUDA. All right. So the device is direct uh, device is assigned as the CUDA. Thereafter, I write here the tokenizer is equal to auto tokenizer dot from underscore pre trained and then I assign here the checkpoint and then I write here the model is equal to auto model for sequence classification dot from underscore pre trained then I write here the checkpoint. Thereafter, I need to say it here that how many classes are there. So I say there, there is two classes. So I write here the number of labels is equal to the two since it is a binary classification. Thereafter, I write it here to device. Now the model will be moved from CPU to GPU so that it can do the training and inference faster. All right. So it is going to take a while to download the model. Now the model is downloaded all right so the model is downloaded and at the end of the model you will see there you know uh, uh, the classifier is uh, assigned there otherwise you can just uh, uh, you know print this model itself just to see that at the output layer you will see there the classifier is assigned here all right so there is the two output uh, the two output neurons are there and there are 768 input lay, uh, input neurons are there because because original model the original distilled birth model gives us 768 uh, context embedding uh, size there all right so this is the model now we have uh, downloaded our model now it is time to convert our data frame into a custom data set so we have our data frame df now we have to read the review so there data frame df review we got it here the maximum review total number of review is here the 10000 we assign it to the x so i write here x is equal to the df review dot to list here all right now it will get converted as uh, you know as a list thereafter the sentiment we see it here these are string value but these sentiment need to be converted as integer value for that i write here label to id a dictionary i assign here a dictionary so i see here when positive this is manual assignment so i do here when it is a positive then it is one and when it is a negative then it is zero so similarly i have to also assign here id to label in this case i assign here when it is one then i say here it is positive and when it is zero then assign it as here uh, negative that's how i assign it 
now i have to map our uh, uh, the sentiment with label to id so i write here the df dot sentiment dot map and thereafter i have to do here label to id thereafter i have to convert it as the list now you can see your x and y here so it's going to take a while now you see there the y is converted as integer value and if you scroll it here at the top maybe it is very large scroll actually it's difficult to scroll yeah so you can see there the x values as well but we don't want to print all these values these are unnecessary so i write here the data set now the time to utilize the custom data set so the data set is equal to the custom data set now this custom data set if you remember it takes here the text data labels and the tokenizer it also takes the maximum length but i have assigned here as the default value 512 so you don't need to pass that there here you need to do here the custom data set and here you pass the data set uh, i'm sorry the custom data set you pass you need to pass here x y and then the tokenizer so with this we will be getting our data set now we have got the data set now if you check this data set so you will be getting here the custom data set all right so this custom data set we have got if you uh, take the first value you will be getting here the input id all right and the labels and the attention mask here so that you can check it here with the keys so there are three key here input id attention mask and label now we have to divide this data into the training set and the test set so i write here the train data set and uh, test data set is equal to train test split thereafter i pass here the data set then i write here a uh, train test split data set test size is 0 0.2 thereafter i write here random state is equal to 42 which is just random anyway all right so the train test is split is done now you have the train data set and test data set separated by the 20 percent 20 percent data that's the 2000 comes as the test data set 8000 comes as the train data set once this split is done now if you check it here that the sequence so the custom data set preparation is done now we are going to build our compute matrix thereafter training argument and then the trainer let's go ahead and build the compute matrix so in compute matrix this compute matrix we have to prepare because in hugging phase this compute matrix does not comes as inbuilt process like we get in sklearn so we have to build this uh, compute matrix separately so that we can print out the accuracy and f1 score all these stuffs here so I write here from sklearn dot matrix import accuracy underscore score and then I write here f1 score thereafter I build here diff compute matrix and then the prediction for each epoch will come here then I say here the labels is equal to pred dot label underscore id so during the evaluation process this prediction will come here i mean to say that the model will call compute metric so in this spreads we will be having here you know the label id that is the labels along with that we will be also having here the prediction so these labels are the true value these are the predicted value let me just see it as the pred perhaps would be better or i can see it as example that would be better here all right then i write here the preds equal to example dot predictions dot org max so i get here now the predicted value this one is the true value here is the predicted value then i calculate here the f1 score so i write here f1 underscore f1 score I pass the true value that's the labels and the predicted value and then i say here the average is equal to the weighted so this weighted will make sure that if class if there is imbalance with the data it will make sure that it is uh, handled accordingly 
Thereafter, I say here the accuracy. So in case of the accuracy score, I write here accuracy equal to the accuracy score. And then I say here labels and then I see here as threads. Then here I write. All right, so I got here the compute matrix. All right, I got here the uh, uh, F1 score, accuracy score, all these stuffs I have got. Now let's go ahead and do the batch size. Batch size is 16. And then here I have the model name is equal to distilbert underscore fine tuned. And then I say here as the sentiment. So the compute matrix is ready. Now we are going to build the training argument. So I write here the orgs is equal to the training arguments. It's like this. All right. So I got here the training arguments. In this training arguments, the few things we have to assign, like we have to assign here the output DIR, where the checkpoints will be saved. So that I say here the model name. All right. Otherwise, for this, I can just say that output. All right. This model name, I'll be using this to save our model. So the training argument is essentially the argument which we pass for our model during the training. Here I say the per device, uh, uh, per device training batch size. So this you can control per device. Train batch size is equal to batch size. Then I say here per device eval batch size is equal to batch size. Thereafter, the, I assign here uh, a learning rate that as I assign as to uh, 10 power minus 5, 2 into 10 power minus 5. Thereafter, I assign here the number of training epochs. So there I assign as 5. Thereafter, I write here the evaluation underscore strategy. That's the evaluation strategy. Here I assign as epoch. All right. So on every epoch, the model evaluation will be done. That's mean this compute matrix will be called and then it will calculate there how much uh, uh, accuracy is achieved on evaluation or test set data. That's the training argument. I run here the training argument. It says that there is no training argument. Let me just see it training argument. Did we import this training argument? Let me see. I remember that I imported this somewhere. Seems like we have not imported training argument, which we have to do. All right, no issue. So that we do here from transformers import trainer import training arguments. Let's go ahead and run this now. Now it should be able to run this part of the code. Now this is the time to build the trainer. So I build here the trainer is equal to the trainer. And then I write here the model is equal to model. And thereafter, I write here the orgs is equal to orgs. That's the argument which we had built here. Thereafter, I say here the train data set is equal to train data set, which we had got during our train test split. Thereafter, I write here eval data set is equal to test data set, which again we had got during our train test split. Thereafter, I write here the compute matrix is equal to compute matrix. And luckily, the name is same here. And you don't need to be keep this name same. Thereafter, we pass here the tokenizer. Let's go ahead and run this. Now I run this trainer. Thereafter, I write here the trainer dot train. Now it is going to train the model. So seems like something is wrong somewhere. It says that too many dimensions. The first thing it says. The second thing it says, unable to create tensor, you should probably activate truncation or padding with the padding equal to true or truncation to have the batch tensor with the same length. Perhaps your features labels in this case. Okay, have excessive nesting input IDs, list where type int is expected. 
let me check the code and then I'll come back to you. All right, now I understood the error. That error is actually here inside this labels. So this label should be here, the torch dot tensor. And uh, then seems everything fine here. So torch dot tensor self dot labels idx, that's all. I had to run it few times just to understand that where the error is that. Earlier I had written that as str, but that have to be torch dot tensor. All right, thereafter you just need to run the, you know, consecutive part of your code. All right, so the train test split will happen again. Then the compute matrix, you have to run it again. Thereafter this training argument you have to run and then you have to run this trainer equal to the trainer. Then you have to run here the trainer dot train. So it's going to take some time to train your model. Uh, seems like it is going to take a lot of time. This should not take that much of the time. This is huge time actually. It say it says that it is going to take a 30 minute to train. I, I, I don't think that it should take that much of the time. Uh, this time is huge actually. It's utilizing the T4. I have on local computer a uh, simple some uh, 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 TI2660 perhaps that one. That took around 5 minutes per epoch and here it is saying that it will take 31 minute. This is huge, right? This is huge. So I have to wait or I have to first see that why it is taking that much of the time. And other than that, one more thing I should do here instead of training it that many epoch, I should train it just for single epoch. I don't need to train it for that many epoch. All right. So just train it for a single epoch. Then we have to wait for that much of the time to get it trained. Thereafter, we will continue our code. So in continuation part, we will save our model and thereafter we will, uh, uh, we will use the pipeline and we will see that what will be the output. All right, now I see after running it again, it is taking just five minutes. <laughs> All right, so I have ran this only for one epoch. It's the single epoch. All right, so it will take five minutes to run it. All right, we'll connect after five minutes. All right, so it is done. I can see here the training accuracy and validation accuracy. In fact, we have got around 91%. F1 score is also around 91% which we can assume safely that our model has performed very well on given that we have trained it just for a single epoch. Now the training part is done. Let's go ahead and save the model. To save this model, you can simply run here the trainer dot save. Save the model and then the model name. I just run this. Now it will save your model here. Now you can check it here. Your model is saved here. You have tokenizer, you have tokenizer config model and you have here safe tensor. That's the actual model. All right. So once model is saved, now you can load this model with the pipeline. So I write here text is equal to, in fact, now you can see that uh, model testing. So I write here the text is, I hate this product. Then I say here, pipe is equal to pipeline. And the task which we are doing here, text classification and the model which we are going to load here, that's the model name. So this particular model we are going to load here. Thereafter inside this, we pass here pipe text. I just run this. After running this, you will see here the label zero. Here it's not the positive and the negative. In fact, it is the zero and one. So in this, it says that 98% sure that this is negative sentiment. But as soon as you do this, I love this product. It says that here one, that's the positive sentiment. If you remember with our ID to label, you can check here that ID to label. So in ID to label, we had zero means negative, one means positive. That's this one is the positive. So that's how you do with pipeline. 
but there is the traditional way to do this that's the raw method to do uh, to uh, to calculate the prediction and the probability so the raw method to get it done let me write that so again here text i love this product thereafter i write here uh, the tokenizer as tok because i already have the tokenizer named as tokenizer but now i want to load this from the model name which we have just stored there the still but uh, uh, the sentiment model for that i say here the tok and then i say here the auto tokenizer from pre trained and then i say here the model name thereafter mod is equal to auto model for sequence classification dot from pre trained thereafter i write here model name all right so we write here uh, auto tokenizer dot from pre trained model name model equal to again auto model for sequence classification dot from pre trained model name once we have loaded our model and tokenizer from the saved model thereafter we can encode our text data which we have here actually so i can write it here so input id is equal to tok dot encode and in this i can pass this text data then i say here return as tensor that's the pytorch tensor thereafter i say here the output is equal to model which we have just loaded as the input id that's how we get the output now you check here the output so you should be able to see here the logits so here is the logits all right so once you get the logit now these logit need to be converted into the probability so for that i write here the preds is equal to torch dot neural network dot functional dot softmax thereafter i write here the output dot logits thereafter the dimension is equal to minus 1 that's mean it is going to flat it and then it's going to calculate the uh, 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 it's it's going to apply the softmax function on these values so now you will see here you will be seeing the probability now once you get the probability after this probability you have to get now the uh, 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 the sentiment from this probability so the first of all i choose the maximum probability by typing here the prob is equal to the torch dot max from this predicted value dot item and then i multiply by 100 that it gives just the probability or you can just remove this and then i get here the index number the maximum index number that's the idx is equal to the torch dot org max and in that i get here the preds dot item thereafter i get here the sentiment is equal to id to label because this one is going to give us the id now i need to convert that id to label i need to pass that idx here so i print here now the sentiment and then i print here the probability all right so it says that i love this product keep just the positive sentiment now what you can do you can define here a function get prediction in this you pass the text data and then you just do like this and then you return here sentiment and probability like this you return here a dictionary in fact you can return here the dictionary something like this and then you call let me just copy this text from here and then paste it here then i write here get prediction and then i pass the text data so it says that the sentiment is positive and the probability is this much now you can pass other text data like i hate this product you will be seeing here the negative sentiment and the probability is 98% congratulations you have built here a sentiment analysis with distilled word for imdb dataset all right this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching this 
please like this video and subscribe this channel and share this channel and video on social media and with your friends. Alright.